Hi there, today we're looking at inequalities in two triangles. So we're going to be comparing two triangles uh, that maybe have some similar features or some congruent pieces and using that to determine inequalities between the two triangles. All right, so we'll have some pieces that maybe we know are congruent, other pieces that we know are less than or equal or less than or greater than uh, certain pieces, and that'll help us determine whether or not uh, other pieces of these triangles are going to be s smaller or bigger, uh, things like that. So the first thing we're going to look at is the hinge theorem. And uh, sometimes this is called the, the side angle side uh, inequality theorem. Uh, but really, it, it works like a hinge. I have two sides and the angle in between. And the thing that's changing is the angle in between, uh, almost like two pieces working on a hinge. So like in, in this particular uh, example, when we look at it, uh, the hinge theorem essentially says this. If I have something like AB being congruent to XY, so these two pieces are congruent, and AC is congruent uh, to xz, all right, so I have these two pieces congruent, and then the angle in between, which is like the hinge, uh, if we say that those angles are essentially not congruent, and I say that one is bigger than the other, in this case, I'm saying that angle two is bigger than angle one, what I can conclude then is that the side across from those angles uh, has the same relationship. In other words, BC, uh, this guy right here, has to be smaller than XY. That's what the hinge theorem says. And so when you think about it, uh, really the easiest way to think about how you know this is true is how a compass works. If you think of a, a compass being like the two uh, sides of your triangle, and then as you adjust the compass it changes the uh, angle, uh, we're essentially changing the measurement of the compass, making it larger or smaller. All right, and so really this is what we've been using to measure things uh, when we do constructions. The hinge theorem is how the, the compass works in terms of measuring, measuring lengths, okay? And uh, the proof for this is very, very involved. We'd have to redraw these so that they become overlapping triangles. And uh, so we're not actually going to do the proof, but here it is in, in words. Uh, the hinge theorem basically says this. Two sides of the triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle. And the angle in between, that included angle, is not congruent. Then whichever uh, angle is larger is going to give us essentially the longer side of the triangle. So the, the longer third side is the one that's opposite the larger included angle. Okay, And, and again, this, this should be obvious to us in terms of how this works because of our work with constructions and using the compass. That's what, what the... Uh, compass is utilizing is this hinge theorem, okay? So if two of the sides are congruent with one another, and the angles in between there, the included angle, are not congruent, then we can make a conclusion about the third side. The, that third side, uh, the longer third side, is always across from the longer angle, okay, the larger angle, all right? For example, if I look at something like these guys, it just asks what statement can be made about the triangles. So when I look at this, this is the hinge theorem at work. So I have two sides that are congruent to one another. Uh, and when we look, it's, it's these two sides here. These guys are congruent, and then these guys are congruent. And so really what we're doing is we're taking two equal pieces, and we're changing the angle. We're opening up, uh, we're essentially opening up the angle more with one than we are with the other. And so as we look at this thing, because we see that 120 is bigger than 89, it means that this opposite side, LP, has to be bigger than this opposite side, which is AF. All right, and that's how the hinge theorem works. So the statement that can be made here is that LP must be greater than AF. And of course, I could say that the other way, I could say that AF is less than LP. All right, but that's the statement can, that can be made. And again, it's the same thing that we did when we were using our compass. In this one, the same kind of thing, what statement can be made about the triangles? Again, I'm looking for the hinge theorem here, so I see that uh, this side is congruent to this side, and these guys are congruent, and now we look and the angle in between is not congruent, which means the side across from those has the same relationship as these angles. So again, it's like I'm opening a, a compass up longer uh, versus uh, shorter uh, to measure a distance, so the distance across uh, this guy right here because the 125 is bigger, that side has to be larger than the, the side that's across from the 78 degree angle, than this side. Okay, So the conclusion that can be made is that PG is greater than AT. Okay, and that's it. That's the hinge theorem. But again, it relies on the fact that we have two sides congruent, but the angle in between is not congruent. So it kind of uses that side angle side, except 
we're not talking about all three pieces being congruent. Just the sides congruent, but the angles are different. Okay? Uh, we also have the converse of the hinge theorem, which is very similar, except now this is almost like side, side, side inequality. Uh, because if we're, we're not talking about the angle in between, we're talking about two sides, and then we want to use the third side to tell us about the angle in between. All right. So if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the third sides are not congruent, then I can conclude something about the angles. I can say that the larger uh, included angle is across from the longer opposite side, okay, or the the side that's uh, the opposite side that's longer. Um, and and so really, it's the same thing, but in reverse. Uh, before we had the two sides that were congruent, and we knew the angle in between was not congruent. And uh, knowing which angle was larger helped us determine which third side was larger. Well, now we have two sides that are congruent, and we know which third side is larger, so then we can determine which angle is larger. All right? So same thing, but in reverse, and that's why it's the converse of this thing. But it's just saying we can use this backwards, essentially. So if I look at something like this guy, it says, uh, find the range of values for x. And so when you look at this, because I have these sides being congruent, uh, to one another and then I look and I see that the third side over here this guy is not congruent so the third side is not congruent and this side the 9 is larger which means the angle across from this has to be the angle of, has to be bigger than the angle across from this guy so in other words right here this is a 90 degree angle that 90 degree angle has to be bigger has to be greater than the angle that's across from the 7, which is the 3x plus 18. Okay, So again, it's still using my hinge theorem, but saying, hey, if the, if the measurements from these two, si these two points uh, are larger, it means that that angle uh, must be larger. Okay, The other thing here is I can't have an angle uh, that's smaller than 0. My angle, the 3x uh, plus 18, has to be greater than 0. And this is how I'm going to come up with those range of values let me scoot those up a little bit. I'm just going to solve each of these inequalities. So this one, I would subtract the 18 from each side. That gives me a 72 is greater than the 3x. And I'm going to divide each side by the 3. Uh, and that's going to show me that x is less than, and I'm just flipping this thing around, uh, but it looks like a 20, um, uh, 4. And then the next one, I, I do the same thing. I'm just going to solve this, so I subtract the 18. And now I divide each side by the 3. So I find out that x has to be greater than a negative 6. And so the inequality, the range of values that I write, is that x has to be between negative 6 and the positive 24. And that's it. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. If I look at the next guy, oh, went a little too far there. Uh, it says find the range of values. And once again, when I look at this thing, uh, the thing that this kind of hinges on uh, is that that is congruent to itself. So now I can look at this angle that's in between. I see that this side is larger than this third side, which means this angle has to be larger than this angle. Okay. So then what I can say. Uh, is that the 5x minus 20 has to be less than the 60. Or you can say that the 60 is greater than the 5x minus 20. I also know that the 5x minus 20, that that angle has to be greater than 0 or the angle doesn't exist. So now I can use this to find my range of values. So now I can finish solving this thing. So I find that the 5x equals 80. I divide each side by the 5. So I find out that x equals, uh, let's see, that looks like it's going to be uh, fifth, uh, Sorry, uh, 16. And I dropped my inequality sign like a goofball here. And now I solve the other one. Just add in that 20 to each side. And now I divide each side by the 5. But again, what this does is it sets up a range of values for me. So x has to be greater than the 4. Which means overall that x has to be between the 4 
and the 16. So I write the inequality this way. Okay. The last thing is maybe using these uh, in terms of uh, uh, doing a proof. So for this one, I'm given that uh, BA is uh, equal to the measurement of DE, and I can label that on here so BA and DE are the same. Uh, I'm also told that uh, BE, which is uh, uh, this leg right here, is longer than DA, so I know that those are uh, have, have that relationship. Um, and now from here, I want to prove that BAE, so I want to prove that this whole angle right here is larger than BEA, which is this angle right here, okay? So let's start with my statements and my reasons here. And as always, I'm, of course, going to start with what's given. And up from here, there's a couple things I can say. The, the first thing I'm probably going to say, because I noticed that these are overlapping, is uh, I'm going to say that AE uh, is equal to itself. Uh, you could say congruent to itself, but since we're talking about equality and inequalities, let's say equal to itself. And that's just my reflexive property. And so what happens then, if I label that guy, is I see that when I look at those two triangles separately, I have the two sides and I'm talking about the angle in between. And, and so when I look at this, uh, the thing that it tells me about that third side, it's showing me that the third side uh, of this thing, and again, maybe it helps if I, if I redraw these two triangles. So I've got one triangle here uh, with these guys, and then I have the other triangle going this way with these guys. Um, and so what I'm finding out then, uh, because it tells me if I, let me label these, A, B, E, and then this guy is D, A, E, it told me that this guy right here, uh, B, E, and as part of my given, that B, E, this piece is larger than D, A, which is this piece, and since I have the two sides and I, I'm looking for the relationship with the angle in between, I can then say that this angle right here has to be bigger than this angle right here. And when you think about it, this angle right here, this is angle BAE, which is the one I was referring to. And this angle down here is DEA, all right, um, which, which I'm getting uh, closer to here. But uh, So when I look at something like this guy, I jump over here. So what it tells me then is angle, uh, or sorry, the measure of angle, BAE, uh, has to be greater than the measure of angle uh, DEA. Okay, so that's one thing that I have here. And uh, really, that's because of my, uh, my hinge theorem, or rather the converse of my hinge theorem. I'm just going to say hinge. And then from there, I just have to find a way to, to see if I can uh, show that the angle that I was talking about, BEA, is somehow smaller uh, than B, uh, than, sorry, DEA. And so when you look at this, uh, if I jump back up to the original picture, let me get rid of some of this extra stuff that's over here. When you look at that, I'm talking about this whole angle versus this little angle down here. And so what I can say is I can immediately say that uh, the measure of angle DEA has to be greater than the measure of angle BEA. And that's because those are two pieces being added up to the whole thing. And, of course, the whole thing is larger than one of the pieces. That's my comparison property. And so then what happens is if I know that in terms of my comparison property, that uh, DEA must be bigger than 
uh, the measure of BEA, and I know that BAE is larger than DEA, I can conclude that the measure of angle B uh, AE has to be greater than the measure of angle BEA because of my transitive property. Okay.